Hello everybody, my name is Ryan and I am the King of Booty Fab and uh, today I'm out here with my daughter, the lovely, wonderful Mini-Me. Hi! Who, uh, <laughs> she's going to give me a hand and uh, we're going to swap out this slush box for something with a little bit more positive feel. Now when I went down to my buddy's shop, Backdoor Fab, um, while I was down there took down some of my parts and we made this old Saginaw 3 speed fit this BOP bell housing so that I could bolt it on the back of this Oldsmobile motor um, it's parts that were destined to go together and I'm gonna skip back to that in just a second but uh, this car was destined for manual transmission it always needed a clutch so that's what we're doing today we're gonna walk you through the process of ripping out this auto putting in the stick a little bit of the basics for people that don't know a little bit so that I can show my daughter here what she's doing to swap a transmission uh, these are some of the lessons that I, I love being able to show her too so uh, yeah she's along for the ride today too uh, do me a favor if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel uh, like the video if you pick up any tips or you enjoyed the time drop me a comment down below do the whole YouTube thing um, should be a lot of fun today you know auto to manual swaps always a blast this one's pretty easy there's not a whole lot in the way it should go pretty quick comparatively but uh, yeah it lines me up to be able to do all of the metal inside which is something I've just been itching to finish but without knowing how much room I specifically needed just couldn't get at it so this is a huge hurdle to get past so yeah um, we're going to get at that in just a second. First, we're going to jump back to time at the shop and uh, I'm going to show you how we got the parts that I took down there into one piece so that we could get to today. Let's swap that tranny. <laughs> well, since we got everything down here, first order of business to make this work is this hole here isn't quite big enough. For that bearing retainer now I don't want to open up this hole I don't want to deal with that the easiest thing to do is to actually turn that down so I'm gonna pop that off of the transmission stick it in the lathe I did double check the measurements but uh, I don't have to take much off but I'll turn that down so that it fits in here and uh, then we can figure out uh, where these mounting holes lie might have to add some slugs to the transmission or something but uh, yeah, one step at a time so Pulled the uh, bearing retainer off. And the bore there, as you can see. Oh, there we go. Doesn't fit. So, looks like it's about 4.67 ID on the hole. Looking at this, which is so blurry you can't even read it. Looks like 5.126, so I gotta take off yeah, just about a quarter inch off the diameter. So I'm going to chuck this up in the lathe, grab it by the uh, input there, and uh, I'm just going to spin down that outside until she fits nice. Right there. It's perfect. There she go. Just clean it up and I'll get this bolted back to the trans, start checking out mountain holes. Well, lucky turn of events. I don't even have to run Allen head bolts. Turns out these are gonna clear just fine. I had that all turned down. You can see how much I had to take off of it. It came all the way out. But uh, that's all on there. I'm gonna turn, clean up the mating surface pretty quick here. I'm gonna clean up the back of the bell housing. And then uh, I'm going to drop the bell housing on the floor here and turn this thing on its face down into it. See if I can figure out some mountain holes. Well, once I got it all cleaned up, I ran a bolt through to chase the threads in the bell housing. And wouldn't you know it, but uh, that bolt and that bolt line up perfect. And this bolt and this bolt looks like they line up pretty much perfect too. It's just that uh, the bell housing's threaded and the transmission's threaded. So I am going to drill the threads out of the transmission. That way I can put the bell housing in the car and uh, just slide the transmission up onto it. Um, 
I haven't done that quite yet. My backup plan, I had a piece of aluminum. I was going to drill it out on the lathe, tap it for half inch coarse, mark my holes, drill those out, slide my slug in, bolt it to the transmission, and then uh, TIG weld it in because we got the nice big TIG down here. But obviously I don't have to do that. And uh, it's weird. Some of them clock the transmission, some of them don't. It looks like the mounting face looks like it's kind of clocked over to the driver's side but then the transmission bolts down virtually straight up so looks like it'll work out I'm gonna set this down no sense in pulling it apart now I can drill the hole out later but I'm gonna go grab that other transmission start taking the shifter off of it see if the shifter is gonna work on this one for me yeah cleaning this thing up is a job for when I get home but uh, you can see the fit there everything goes bolts are good like I said, these holes line up, you can see it there. They are perfect. Problem is they're both just threaded. But uh, any other trans in the shop now. I'm not gonna bother cleaning this up. I'll wire wheel it, paint it, make it all pretty once I get home. But uh, this one had a shifter on it, which obviously is non-existent. And some more bits to the shifter. But uh, since that's all missing, I'll grab what I can off the other one and uh, see what I need to do. Since it's been robbed off of this one, the other one's a universal shifter. I'm not sure if it's all going to bolt up. The shift rods, are the, like, there's so many variables here, but I'm going to make one shifter out of the two. I think uh, these are bent on the other trans, so I should be able to make one out of two and make this thing work. Um... But I may as well do it while I'm down here, in case I need torch or welding or something. Be nice to build the, the uh, trans tunnel, and that's going to take the shifter when I get home. Now someone somewhere is laughing at me, but i got to be honest. I haven't messed with any, sh any transmission with an external shifter since I was probably in high school. We're talking, well, I've got grown-up kids. So uh, I got the shifter out of this bracket. Now... I know this is bent, I know it's binding, this looks bent, it looks bent down, that bracket looks bent, but those look okay. But that's double shear, so I think I've got to take that bracket and put it on there, and uh, then I can put this shifter in and figure out if the rods fit. Um, it's looking like it should work, I mean realistically, this stuff's all pretty universal, all I need to do is make those move front and back at appropriate times without mashing into each other. No big deal. But uh, I keep taking it apart, and then I'll start putting stuff back together until it all lines up. And uh, I'll probably end up welding some stuff up. For this, you know, I know this all works, but I don't like the way this looks. I may as well just weld up some brackets, and I may never see it again once the trans tunnel's in, but I want it to look good when I open it up, you know, even if it's only for my own peace of mind. Well, got a mix of brackets going on bracket from the old shifter this actually sits pretty good this is multiple shifter brackets stitch welded together this thing's been hacked on a few times it's wonderful I love it so uh, the first reverse shift rod here now ideally we want this rod to kind of be straight like that and you can see where that ends up so since this shift rod is actually not horrible, it's actually got to flatten out a little bit too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw these in the vise and uh, flatten them out a little bit. Like that's not horrible, but I don't like how it looks. So I should be able to flatten this out a little bit. I'll do one at a time. Obviously, first reverse is up first. It's not going to take a whole lot. I got to flatten that out a little bit and you can see I got to pull this over about half an inch. Take a little bit out of that bend, a little bit out of that bend. It should be good to go and then we'll move on to the 2-3 rod. And uh, I ran it through the gears with my finger. This thing shifts like butter. It's amazing. It's probably the best shifting trans I've ever had in my life. So uh, let's see if I can mess it up real good. Now it's tough to do this one handed but there's reverse, and 
there's first gear and rod ain't perfect but uh, once I get that pin in there it's close enough the shifters leaned back I'm gonna need a little bit of length on the shifter to get it where I want it I got a room that I can actually thread these out now when you're setting them up you want these kind of in give or take the same position if I recall now I can actually put that through there and the shifter works however I'm not happy with how much room that takes up that can be a lot tighter there and you can kind of see it kicks way out so same thing with this one I'm gonna pop it right off I'm gonna flatten it out some and uh, then I'm gonna put it together with some cotter pins and I see if this thing shifts all three gears plus reverse and then the last thing it needs I'll probably stitch with all this tomorrow and I'll add the brace from this side over to here I've got it pulled off right now because I haven't decided if I want to use that mangled one or this not so mangled one that I think is way too long or if I just want to cut something and weld it up but it's definitely cleaner than it was it looks pretty good on here but yeah it's late I'm rambling I'm gonna finish this rod Well, there we go. Shift rods aren't the prettiest, but they definitely work. It's wiggling. It definitely needs that brace. I don't want to run power tools anymore tonight. It's, uh, well, it's 10 o'clock. Try to be quiet down here. Not my shop, so. Well, quiet in my shop too, but. See, those rods are so much tighter than when they started. This shifter, I should be able to. Oh, let's get this sitting down flat. I mean, I'm thinking I'll put a kick in this shifter. I can do that at home though. I'll put a kick in it so it kind of leans to the driver's side. Right now it's almost leaning passenger side a little bit. I like it leaning to the driver's side, obviously. But if we go through the gears again, we go over and up. That's reverse first up second third there we go she works i'm uh gonna tidy up and then i'm gonna pack it in for the night you guys will just keep continuing this video in a minute but uh i am calling it quits for now see you tomorrow well that catches us up to today so uh first i'm gonna show you what we got going on here obviously my uh, 260 Olds came out of a 75 Buick Apollo, which is, you know, middle of the smog era. Everything was going automatics and low horsepower and emissions and fuel mileage and all that boring stuff. So uh, the obvious answer was an automatic transmission, which is exactly what I've got here. Now this, can you see it? There you go. This is a Turbo 350, obviously with the BOP bell housing pattern. 
Now, it's different from the Chevy pattern in that it shares the lower bolts here. It shares the dowels, but these bolts, top bolts, are different between Chevy and the BOP. The BOP basically has horns. Um, it means that you need a BOP-specific transmission or bell housing, or you need an adapter plate or whatever. This is obviously the transmission that came on it. I needed to get a BOP bell housing. I wasn't really excited on the idea of an adapter between my motor and my trans motor and my bell housing. So I did find the bell housing I needed, as you saw. Got it on my transmission. We are going to rip this out. And we are putting in this. This is my Saginaw 3 speed, probably from a mid 70s, if I had to guess. Uh, Chevy something. Could have done just about anything. I don't know where the bell housing came from. I don't know where the transmission came from. I don't know. The shifter, I'm pretty sure, is aftermarket. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's a 10 spline course input. I would guess it's got a 27 spline output. It's all going to be pretty generic stuff. Chevy's pretty good like that. But basically, we're going to rip this off and we're going to put that in. We're going to show you all the steps along the way. So, the very first thing we have to do is we're going to get the starter out of the way. And uh, we are going to disconnect the bolts that connect the torque converter to the flex plate. So on the automatic, we've got a flex plate. The manual is going to have a flywheel. Uh, flywheel holds the clutch. Flex plate, all it is is the ring gear for the starter, which attaches, you know, allows you to start the motor, but it also attaches the motor to the torque converter and the transmission. Now, I'm not putting a flywheel in right now. One of the things I've got to check is if my crank is actually drilled for a pilot bushing or a pilot bearing. Um, on a lot of these older Oldsmobile motors, they actually weren't machined for the bearing. If it's not machined for the bearing, that's something I'm going to have to deal with when I get there. But, but for today, the big thing is getting the transmission in so I can build all the sheet metal around it. It's all got to come apart for final winning, welding, finish work, paint, all that stuff. So when it comes apart, I'll deal with the flywheel and clutch then. But for right now, I can assemble it, bolt it together without that stuff, and uh, come back to it later. So first things first, we're going to rip the starter off, and then we're going to disconnect the transmission here. Yeah, let's get started there. Well, it's so much easier to work on cars when there's no metal in the way. Jade hasn't pulled a starter before. But, 916 socket, GM stuff's pretty straightforward, two bolts on there, and uh, you're tightening it, you got to reverse the ratchet, sweetheart. That's okay. So there's one bolt that she's on, and there's one bolt straight parallel to that, just towards the inside. And uh, if she can't crack it loose, then I'm going to give her a hand here, not to put down the camera, but... Just give me a second, guys, and go... <laughs> it's okay. I'll crack them loose, sweetheart. This is impossible. <laughs> After some technical difficulties, no help from my dad. I cracked them all by myself. Not a girl. Remind me, just now, remember to get a hand on that starter so it doesn't just fall on you when you get that bolt all the way out. Since that's the only thing holding it in. What do you mean something's going to fall on me? Get a hand under that starter. What's a starter? <laughs> this here I'm doing. This here. Oh, that's not heavy. Okay, but you don't want it to fall on you. Okay. It won't. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't like that it's adjustable. I can undo it with my fingers now. Yeah. Okay. You got this. I know. Don't need to tell me twice. I know. I'm pretty cool. Super cool. I know the coolest. <clears throat> One hand. No. <laughs> I got this. I blame it on the fact that it's greasy. Okay. It's slippery. Wait, but isn't something else holding the starter to this? It might be. It shouldn't be. Because if you look at it, it goes all the way up. Hmm. Yeah. It's 
probably that heat shield under Some, your hand. Something is holding it back yeah. here. It's probably that heat shield actually. We'll look once the bolt's out. Because yeah, it should be slipping down on the bolt already. I'm also holding it. Okay. Good girl. Sorry guys, this might take me. It's okay, the rest of it will go pretty quick. See? You see that? I did that. It's hanging on that bolt right there. Yay, another one! That looks like 9 16 as well. Spin the ratchet up, sweetheart. Up, up, up. There you go. That'll be your best shot. Okay, you ready, guys? I'm gonna do this. Ow! <laughs> oh, scraped knuckles. <laughs> Maybe I'll break out the electric impact for the rest of them for you. You got it. It see doesn't that? really matter if did it you falls. See that? I did. You broke it loose. If it falls, it's okay. It's just landing on wood. I might be replacing that starter, anyways. Don't catch it with your fingers, you'll break them. Tech tip of the day starters will break little also, fingers. Don't touch this thing. Yeah, don't punch that. It'll scrape your knuckles. Kind of hurt. You saw that, right? I broke that all by myself. I did. Oh, you're gonna hold it. Oh no, Dad, I got it stuck. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I can't reach the angle. Well, you got it. Okay. Whoops. Tell you what, take that bolt. Oh, it's it, so little. Yep, yeah, put it back in that hole, thread it back in the hole you took it out of. No, the hole, the threaded hole on the block. No, right, right there. Oh. Okay. Why did I try and stick it in? I don't know. Thread it in a few turns. It doesn't go in. Yes, it does. You got it. The slowest starter removal ever. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Do you want a hand? It's my first time. I know. I'm very proud. There you go. You see that, guys? You win. I okay, next up. Now, with the starter out of the way, you can see the bolts. Well, one's there. There should be three on this. I think there's some GM torque converters that had four, but I'm pretty sure there should be three on this. I've seen some with six, but yeah, basically, spin the motor over until you hit those, pop those bolts out, and uh, you want to make sure you get all of them out and keep spinning it until you find a hole without a bolt in it to make sure you've gone all the way around. Nothing sucks worse than getting the tranny half off, finding out you missed a torque converter bolt. Yeah, I will, I will, I will crank it over for you, and you tell me when the bolt is in the opening. Punch that Did metal I there. Reverse it? No, you're going the right way. Just don't punch that metal right there. Do you want a hand? Yes. Nice, okay. I don't want to cut my hand. Okay. It's hard. There you go. Don't mind me, guys. Just... We'll speed this part up. We got the bolts out, but just to verify, and because I like to disengage the torque converter cr snout from the crank, Jay's going to take her pry bar, put it in between the flex plate and the torque converter. Are you in there? I'm going to pry a little bit. Did it move back? I don't know. Give it a little pry? No. Huh? I don't think. Let's see if it moves back. No, you got it back, it pushed back. Oh. 
So we're good. You can see there it's disengaged. That little boss would have been where the bolt was. So she's got it pushed back. So normally we would throw a jack underneath the oil pan or something here. What I'm going to do, since there's nothing up front and I can, I'm going to run a ratchet strap from the front of the motor down to the front of my frame. That'll hold the motor up, stop it from dropping off when we reef out the tranny. And uh, then it's just six more bolts, the bell housing bolts here, and this transmission comes out. So bell housing bolts. 916 socket need an extension to get past that tab i don't have my air hooked up so she's going to use the electric impact just take it apart she's going to do almost all this swap <laughs> so no video of prying it loose because i'll show you what happened we got a dowel in the motor there and a dowel in the transmission here that was not supposed to come out it's supposed to be pressed into the motor and uh yeah it did not want to stay so currently the plan is to get the entire transmission up on some two by fours up on the sills here. I'll wiggle it back, work, work boards underneath until I can get it all the way up on a couple of two by fours. Once they're on two by fours, we can slide it right out the door opening, lift it down to the ground. I'm not gonna videotape this because my back's bad and uh, honestly, I just don't wanna see, I don't wanna show everybody how uh, interesting this is gonna be. So I'm going to spend a few minutes with my daughter here and we're going to get this out on the ground and uh, we're going to clean up a little bit of spilt fluid and then we'll get on the fun stuff putting in the good one. That was actually far less painful than I thought it would be. Once I got uh, the tail up a little bit it just slipped right up into place. I forgot how much lighter a Turbo 350 is than a Turbo 400 so uh, yeah I'm just going to slide this out the side, get it out. We're going to clean up some of this knock that flex plate off and uh, we're off to the races so just a quick tech tip reminder for everybody if you're pulling a tranny out this is something you care about go find an old uh, dollar store wrench I don't know everybody's got a pile of those cheap cheap wrenches that they've got lying around for no reason bolt it through say this bolt here nut and bolt it so that the angled head, you use the boxed end, angle it in this way so that it pushes on that torque converter. That wrench will keep that torque converter seated so it doesn't fall out. The last thing you want is this falling out. And uh, it's really helpful to keep it seated and you don't have to worry about it because then you don't have to worry about it jostling around, possibly going back and breaking the pump because I'll tell you what, Nine times out of ten, if you have a transmission failure right after you put a transmission in, it's because you didn't make sure the torque converter was seated. You bolted it up to the flex plate without making sure that you had that air gap I showed earlier. And uh, when you tighten down the bell housing bolts, you broke the input, you broke the pump drive, and uh, no fluid pressure means no forward movement. So, uh, yeah, do that. Now, just looking at this here, Let's see if I can, uh, I'm going to hit this with some flash. Now, I can't quite tell. I've read these aren't all ready to go. It almost feels like there's a little bit of taper to that, but it also looks like it's been machined out. So, somebody else tell me on here. I look, this look like it's machined out for my, uh, oh, I guess if it sits in there, I'm not sure. Somebody tell me, does that look like it's machined out for my flywheel or for my uh, pilot bushing? I'll order one up and find out. Worst case, I'll hog it out. I don't know. We'll figure that out as I get there. Pilot bushings are cheap. I'll order one up and see if it fits. But uh, yeah, we just got to pop this flex plate off and uh, we can start slamming in the new one. This big hole right here with that dowel right there. She 
be pretty close right there. Yeah, Tim. Okay, now what? Okay, the bolts are right there. Is it the right way? Yep, yeah, it's the right way. You're good to go. Don't tighten them up all the way. Get get it, you know, snugged up a little bit, and then put the other three in. Until my arms can't do it anymore. Yes, we're only putting four in because that's how many we've managed to find. It's just for mock-up, anyways. It's only going to have two bolts between the transmission and the bell housing too, so not a big deal. Okay, throw the other ones in. Well, that's, that's why they make them that way. That's so fun. <laughs> Already learning. Spot here. Okay. It's stabbing me. Okay, move over. Did you buy it? Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, so. Get in there. Minty. So the last thing we're going to do here, I need a measurement center to center of those two bolts on the bottom. Can you see them from there? Nope. Okay, I'll get it once you get out of here then. Okay. So normally this would be much more of a bit of a pain in the butt. Next time I do this, there'll be a floor in here. We'll have proper lumber and stuff so we're not slipping through the cracks. I'm always going to change this transmission through the floor. I'm going to build the bell housing or the dog house and the trans tunnel to accommodate drive shaft and tranny changes through the floor because it's going to sit on the ground and uh, really this just makes it easier if I can make it all removable. Why not? Normally I'd be feeding the pilot or the input into the uh, clutch disc and my pilot bearing, bushing, whatever. 
um, and that would be a struggle. You wouldn't be able to put it in on an angle like we did. Um, but that's a problem for another day when the clutch is actually in here. Um, I found all the clutch bits I need online. I can get all the stuff. I've just got to kind of bounce between Oldsmobile and Buick models and I can get everything that I need pretty easily. It's all pretty standard stuff since it's an Oldsmobile motor, but they don't make the flywheel for a 75 Buick Apollo, but they do make it for a 75 Oldsmobile something. I can get it for the exact same 260 V8. It just, for whatever reason, the car this came out of, it's not listed, but I can buy a clutch kit for it. The clutch kit for it will work with this transmission. We're gold. The uh, clutch fork that goes with this bell housing, it looks like it's the exact same fork across 70s um, Buick Pontiac Olds Chevys. The Chevys, it looks like it's the same clutch fork all the way up to 2000. So I shouldn't have a problem finding a clutch fork for this at all. Um, might take a little bit of messing around because I'm also going hydraulic at the same time since I have my racing pedals all drawn up. But uh, today, what we're going to do, I'm going to get a, I'm going to double check this measurement so I can order a trans mount. Um, I've been waiting on building a lot of stuff on getting this transmission in here until I had my trans in so I could build my trans mount cross member. I need my mount spacing for that just to double check that the bolt width is correct. Um, then I can build my cross member, put my mount in. There'll be no more ratchet strap, no more jack under the back of the block. This will all be contained in the car, and we can start building the doghouse and the transmission tunnel and get a drive shaft in this thing because this was literally the last big piece we needed. So I'm going to do that. We're going to drop it on a piece of wood, and uh, I'll be back in a second. Well, sitting down inside the car, it becomes pretty apparent that uh, the shifter is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt. I'm going to have to give up some leg room. This is why I didn't want to build the dog, the dog house, because the sh shifter sits over top of my flange here, which not a big deal. But uh, if my feet are going to end up here, the steering wheel, yeah. I'm gonna have to bend that shifter that way. I thought I'd actually have, I thought I'd be bringing it closer to me, but I guess I gotta bend it further away. So uh, I'm gonna have to deal with that. Not a big deal, that just unthreads and I can put it wherever I want. Um, then I'll put a nice bling custom made shift knob on it. Um, I got lots of room down there for my clutch slave to kind of fit in that pocket and see it there. And obviously on this side, we have a mile of room, so we're just going to make that doghouse cut nice and low over the trans. No reason to make it massive since it all unbolts. We'll just uh, tuck it as tight as I possibly can, and then everything will be on flanges with riv nuts and unbolt from here. But uh, yeah, since it's in here, now the next step is to get back onto the sheet metal, which I have been itching to do so badly. Okay, thanks guys. So, uh, I know it's not super interesting, but for somebody that's never done it before, like uh, <laughs> this one here, I think she picked up some stuff. I hope somebody out there picked up some pointers along the way, some tips, some tricks, maybe learned something they didn't know, or just generally enjoyed spending a little bit of time with us. Um, I'm super excited for this. This car was destined for a manual trans from the beginning. It's uh, it's exactly what it needed, and it was the last big piece I needed to move forward with this. So from me and I think her, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, if you haven't yet, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. We won't call, call solicit sales. You know, all it'll do is give you a little notification when I put up a video, but it really helps me out. Um, like the video if you enjoyed it, drop me a comment, give me some feedback. If anybody knows off the top of their head if that crank is actually drilled without me, you know, putting a micrometer on it, let me know. I'm not sure if there's a good visual difference and I haven't bothered to mic it yet because I took it apart and put it right back together. But uh, if you happen to know either way, I'm ordering the parts to slam it together later. Um, the next video that comes out, I'm going to introduce you to Hank. 
Hank is a beautiful 1953 International that uh, me, and the, me and Dustin down at Backdoor Fab had the pleasure of hanging out with for about a week. Um, super cool project. I hope to see him again. But uh, I got some video for you guys. I'm going to edit it. That's going to be the next video up. Maybe the next two videos. We'll see how long it breaks down to. But for today, if I haven't said it enough, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.